Buffs can be a complicated thing inside a video, and I know it can be stressful trying to figure out what you need to pop in different grind zones. Well, here I am trying to help you out with this, so let's get on into it. Now, something I have noticed is 98.3% of you are not subscribed versus the 1.7% that are. So if you want to see more content like this in the future, it would help to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, do anything you're going to do, check out the Twitch, check out the Discord, anything. So, let's get on into it. When playing this game, there are many buffs you can pop, each of them doing their own thing, and some of them don't stack on others, especially stuff like EXP scrolls, which some don't like to stack on others. An example of this would be Blessed Message Scrolls, which as you can see it says stacks with other buffs, because it has to specify since there are some that don't. For example, the Combat and Skill EXP 300% scroll says it does not stack with Combat and Skill EXP 300% 530% scrolls. So let's talk about the different categories of buffs. First of all would be the easiest category of buffs, food buffs. When it comes to food, there's not many options, and oftentimes you can just simply pop a simple cron meal. Food buffs typically don't stack on each other, but there are a couple ones that are an exception. Although there are ones that, as I said, are an exception, typically you're just going to want to pop a simple crown wheel for the excessively high extra AP against monsters. If you aren't fighting monsters, then possibly an exquisite crown wheel would be better for you, as it's just straight AP without, type, without taking into account the difference between the type of monsters you are fighting, or mobs you are fighting. So, mainly you're just going to want a simple crown wheel, or an exquisite crown wheel, depending on what you're doing. That about covers it for food buffs, these will stack with all other buffs, excluding food buffs themselves. Next off, let's talk about what I believe to be the most important of all buffs, your elixir buffs. There are many, 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 many types of elixirs on the market, and some of these can stack with themselves while others can't. An example of this would be the droughts. Droughts are also considered elixirs. They're a bit different from perfumes, which we'll cover in just a moment. And you cannot stack these with other elixirs, even though the cooldown is only 10 seconds. If you're just doing a simple grind zone where you easily meet all the requirements for defense, offense, and everything in between, then a simple Frenzy Drought of Corruption is a cheap option that you can use. It gives you a nice little bonus to monster AP and gives you nice HP recovery on hit, which counteracts the all DP minus 15% you receive, unless you get one shot. Typically, this is the cheap option you can go with, costs you about 20 million coins an hour, much cheaper than the rest of elixirs do, and a lot more simple to use. Now, the rest of elixirs are a little more complicated, as you can be popping 14 to 15 of these at a time. As you can see, I have my fairy right there, I named them Annoyance because that's really what they are, but they have a nice little skill that they can learn at the highest tier, a Radiant Fairy. This skill is called Continuous Care. I have tier 4 of it, you're going to want either tier 4 or tier 5, and it can be difficult to get. It could cost you billions to continue rerolling a fairy, or if you really, really want to, which I don't recommend it, you can indeed buy stuff to reroll your fairy inside of the pearl shop. What this skill allows you to do is it gives you an extra UI which you can pop open, and it allows your fairy to pop buffs for you. If you have level 4 continuous care, you can only pop 16 buff items at a time instead of 20. But 16 is good enough, because you are likely going to be popping 1 perfume and 15 elixirs. The rest of the buffs you can pop manually and do yourself. For example, food buff which lasts an hour and 20 minutes, versus elixirs that you're going to have to be popping 4-5 to five times an hour. Now elixir buffs are complicated, and they entirely would require their own guide, but I'm going to cover the bare minimum and basics for your elixir rotations. Elixirs all have their own effects and can stack on each other, but a lot of the zones you're going to be popping them in would be zones like Olin's Valley, Crypt of Resting Thoughts, Dekia zones like Thornwood or Tunkata. Really zones that are complicated to go to and zones where you are likely going to be a high gear player to start out in. Or if you really, really, really want to min-max an underground Gyphons, Elixir Rotations can be something that can help you. Although a Frenzy is likely going to be good enough for you to do it, Elixirs can definitely help. Now, despite elixirs being complicated, the ones I just name dropped all tend to share the same elixir rotations, so I'm going to name the 15 elixirs I like to use for these zones, and those would be the ones you'd be running. Now, the reason it's split into party member 1, 2, and 3 is because that's the rotation specifically for Olens. It works in many zones though, so I'd recommend you just use those elixirs specifically. Now, let's talk about perfumes. 
Perfumes are entirely considered a different type of buff from elixirs. They stack differently, but there is no such thing as a perfume rotation. You only get to pop one type of perfume, really, at a time. So you can switch them out in the middle of grinding, but they will be lasting about 20 minutes, so you'll only be popping about three per grind hour. So it's not anything massive, but it's definitely something that can add on to your grind. Now, there are many different perfumes, but a lot of them are not ones that you'll really be looking to start off, we have the most important perfume, which would be Perfume of Courage. This perfume is excessively sold out, it is excessively pricey, and it is excessively good. Now, when I say excessively sold out, I mean quite. It's been sold a lot more times than it really should have on market, but there are still going to be a whole bunch of pre-orders for it. Perfume of Courage is something that you're going to use to min-max, and it can cost you around 90 million coins an hour to pop this perfume throughout the entire hour you're going to be grinding. So as I said, it is a excessively min-max type item, and if you are popping this, it's likely going to be in zones where you barely reach the AP requirements, especially in zones like Dekia ones, like Thornwood, Nukata, Crypt for Rest and Gods, which isn't Dekia, but it's still kind of like it, or Dekia Owens Valley. Or if you're aiming for those devils, you know, Dekia Ash Forest. Or as we like to call it, Ass Forest, because nobody likes riding there. If you want a cheaper option, there's of course Bracing Spirit Perfume Elixir. This one's a lot easier to get. It's always on market, costs about 5 million, so it won't cost you much to pop throughout the entire hour, and it just gives you a nice little HP bonus, recover MP bonus, critical hit bonus, and extra AP against monsters. Nothing big, but nothing small either. And then if you're Definitely needing a lot more defense than Cox Elixir is one that you're going to want to pop. It's also decently cheap, but it's doable. Returning to Droughts, if you're fighting a zone where it's not monsters, then you can pop a Elixir of Indignation. It's really cheap, and it just gives you a lot more extra damage to humans instead of monsters. Although it is mainly an AP one, it takes away a lot of your survivability. And then of course there's Perfume of Swiftness, it's more of a life skill elixir. I guess you could pop it for the extra weight bonus if you really, really, really don't need anything else. But as I said, it's more of a life skill one. You're going to want to pop it when doing life skills. So that covers food buffs, droughts and elixirs, and perfume buffs. Those are the three main buffs you're going to be using, at least doping wise. Now it comes down to the more obscure buffs that are that tend to be a little easier to get. An example of this would be if you have a tent, this is usually a paid for item, there is a free version. I'm not sure how helpful that free version can be, I haven't used it any time recently. But it might be contained in the free version. If you go to the shop, there is a camp buff, which it gives you an excessively high drop rate bonus. Depending on where you're grinding, this can be made up for. It costs a large sum of cash, so you are going to want to consider if it's worth it. Areas like Olin's Valley may not make up for it because it doesn't have many drops, though the amount of Kaffir stones you get from it may make up for the costs, it just depends on how well you're grinding. While areas like Crypts will definitely make up for it because you are aiming for Deborekas, it could also help in areas like Tunkata Forest Dekia version and Thornwood Forest Dekia version, as well as Ash Forest Dekia version. While it might not make up for the price in areas like Geifenreich Temple Underground, which most of the cash is in trash loot. So in general, if you are popping this temp buff, you are going to want to be aware of where you're popping it, as some areas will make very big profit off of it, while others will barely break even, if breaking even. Next up would be this option here at the tent, the Villa Scroll. This can be accessed from your tent, but it is not particularly a tent buff. Typically, you're going to want to pop the Body Enhancement one as it gives you a large amount of AP, DP, Max HP, Resistance, and Ignoring All Resistance. This Resistance specifically is a big one. Because, for example, if you're playing Shy, we have an ability. It's this green ability here called Summer's Rain and all debuff resistance plus 40% for 60 seconds. It is massive. If you combine the Villa buff right here, which gives you that 10% resistance, plus this buff right here with a 40% resistance, and you run a resistance crystal, and you have a minimum of 25% base resistance. This is me right now with the villa buff. With the buff right here with a resistance crystal, I hit 100% resistance, so I cannot be knocked down. This is excessively important in areas like Olin's Valley or Tunkata Turos, where you are being knocked down 
constantly. Now, to get villa buff, you're gonna need a specific scroll. It's not really a scroll, it's called a villa invitation. There are many different villas, each villa has a different type of buff. Atosa's villa is one of the buffs that you can get the body enhancement from. These villas are located all the way in Valencia. The closest one would be right here, it's Karashu's villa. If you go to that one, you can buy a villa buff from any of the villas which I would recommend buying the Atosa Villa buff, which is all the way out here. You can just stick a character at Karashu's Villa and buy the Atosa Villa buff. You don't have to run all the way out here. And I usually keep an alt out here. You only have to buy the Villa buff once a week, so it's not something massive. But if you don't have a tent, you will have to pop it at a Villa. So I would recommend you have an alt character out here if you have a tent. So that covers Villa buffs. Next one would be furniture buffs. There are many different furnitures you can get, each one containing their own buff. You can place them in a house and they have a limited number of uses. For example, if you have a stuffed yak head, you can put it in your house and you have bonus HP recovery for an hour if you touch the stuffed yak head. Bit odd, but I know, but still. Some of the more powerful ones would be ones like the Master Stuffed Shadow Lion Head, which gives you a plus 15 AP bonus for a long period of time, an hour. Or if you go above and beyond and get a Master Special Stuffed Shadow Wolf Head or Shadow Lion Head, then you can have plus 15 AP for three hours instead. These buffs can be excessively useful, but also excessively expensive if you are trying to get them. If you are a cheapskate, one that I would recommend is the Ancient Camel Statue. It's gone up heftily in price, but it does give a nice AP buff for one hour and has 20 uses out of it. So if you pop this buff, you get 9 AP out of it and has 20 uses. So this 55 million you're spending, you can divide it by 20 and it's costing you roughly 3 million coins an hour. It's pretty, it's pretty cheap. You can buy it for a decent price, but you have many uses. So I'd recommend this one if you are a cheapskate. When it comes to furniture buffs, you're typically going to want to use an AP buff as those ones get the most value out of them. So I covered the two primary ones, the stuffed shadow, lion head, and the camel statue. So let's now talk about church buffs. In every massive city, there is going to be a priest. This priest will give buffs that can be offered by the church, which is why they're called church buffs. And different ones give different abilities. You can buy them for cheap price, they last two hours, or they last five hours. There's the Blessing Church buff, which gives you damage reduction as well as max HP. There's the Bravery Church buff, which gives you all AP and all accuracy up. And there's the Progression Church buff, which just gives you EXP. These church buffs are cheap and last for two hours, so I'd recommend just buying them all, and they all stack on each other. Very annoying. Be gone. Now that's about all there is to buffs. If you are more interested in some of the in-depth things, then you're gonna wanna take a look at actual specified guides for stuff like elixir rotations or how to get perfumes, all these different things. But this is just a quick little introduction on all the buffs you're gonna wanna be running and what you're gonna wanna do before you start a grind. I'm gonna make a video pretty soon that just covers all the things you're gonna wanna keep track of before you start a grind. For example, you're gonna want your pets out, your fairy out, your buffs going, all that stuff stuff that i can sometimes forget so honestly it's a video of a checklist for myself to remember but anyway that'll be all all the other videos that are related to this stuff like crystals light stones i'll put those in the description and i hope you all have a nice one make sure you leave a like subscribe turn notification to anything you're gonna do check out my twitch i've been streaming a lot recently and i will see y'all later goodbye everyone